Hello, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, young dynamics. I'm Ivan Chuariro, and I'm being honored to be your guest MC today for yet another amazing session on young and dynamics, uh, where we are electrifying the future of work in engineering. So I will hand over to our prayer leader for today's session, who is Notenda Pieri, uh, for our morning prayer, or this prayer before we engage into our session. To not end up weary, I hand over to you for our prayer to start our wonderful session. Um, thank you so much, Ivan. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm going to read a, a verse from Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 7, and it reads, do not fret or have any anxiety about anything, but in every circumstance and in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, continue to make your wants known to God. And God's peace shall be yours, that tranquil state of a soul assured of its salvation through Christ. So fearing nothing from God and being content with its earthly lot of whatever sort that is, that peace which transcends all understanding shall garrison and mount guard over your hearts and minds in Christ. Let us bow our heads and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you with hearts full of gratitude and reverence. As we meditate on Philippians, we are reminded of your invitation to surrender our anxieties and find solace in your prayer. Today we humbly lay before you our worries, fears, and burdens, trusting in your Okay. We thank you for the opportunity to have this meeting. We commit each and every one connected into your hands. We commit Engineer Kundai, who is going to be leading us in this session in the future of work of engineering. May the lessons and benefits from today not miss us, and may we carry something tangible from the meeting. May your peace and greatness shine through us, drawing others to seek you. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. I hand over back to you, Ivan. I think you are muted. So today is an amazing session as yes, we are going to continue with our our series that has been uh, started for the past weeks as yes, we are looking forward to enjoy our time with uh, the engineer, Engineer Eggy. Uh, thank you so much for allowing yourself to be today, to be part of the session. Uh, over to you, uh, Engineer. Good afternoon, Pastor Mnashe. Over to you. Good afternoon, engineer. How are you doing? I can't hear from my end. Uh, people, can you comment in the chat box if you can hear it? So I can hear the engineer. Um, so what I will do, I'll just try and make sure that for now she can use my laptop as we connect her audio. 
I think we just need to connect him back. Ah. So kindly be patient with us. It's going to be an amazing session as we are going to continue with our series. Um, they, uh, uh, you know, you are living in an economy where you need to be well faced with information to uh, to make sure that you create a space for yourself uh, in this in the economy in this in the sectors. You know, uh, it's, it's amazing that sometimes we I I attended one of the. Uh, meetings when uh, when our patrons was saying that sometimes we do not choose people to we do not interview people for certain positions we just identify uh, them and give them opportunities so we just need to acquire that kind of information where we are able to put ourselves uh, in in a place where uh, we are creating value for ourselves and then at the employers the opportunities we need to look for. For us, and then we are going to achieve uh, this the goals that we have been set along with the process. Uh, Pastor Mashi, uh, over to you. I see you. You are now ready for the session. And engineer, we are looking forward to enjoy uh, this amazing session with you. Questions will come, and uh, people will type questions in the chat box. Uh, Ivan and my team will be there to you know to face you with those questions as we are going to hear for and enjoy your session. Over to you, engineer. Okay. Hey, uh, greetings, everyone. Uh, please let me know if you can hear me clearly before we continue. Yes, we can, loud and clear. All right, you perfect. You can also see me. <laughs> All right. That's good, that's good. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Kundai Maponga. Mm. For this session, you can call me Engineer Kundai Maponga or Engineer Kundi, whichever makes you happy. But I am so excited to be part of this um, uh, session today as we talk about future work engineering. To all of you who are probably thinking of doing engineering, who are probably uh, studying engineering and uh, prospectus into the corporate world, specifically in the engineering field. So um, first of all, I would just maybe talk about how I got into engineering before I just address some questions that um, I've set up for the presentation. Um, I did my engineering in China for four years. I studied civil engineering. And um, uh, as of today, I've uh, about four years, nine months of experience in civil engineering. In Zimbabwe, I have been working at Zimbabwe National Water Authority and I got in as a graduate student and now I am uh, considered <laughs> a professional engineer in that field. Um, so besides studying civil engineering, I then went on to do a um, master's in project management uh, this was actually a need as I was going up the ladders. I then got exposed to projects and project management, which is actually part of what then happens when you study civil engineering. And uh, I did my master's in project management in Zambia uh, at Information Communications University. And I graduated in the year 2022. So um, as we speak today, I have uh, only worked in Zenwa and still in that same company, I've moved in different departments requiring different uh, skills of civil engineering. I want to say much about myself. I want to just introduce you to civil engineering, any form of other engineering, just engineering as a discipline, uh, and I will try to do my best in doing that. I hope you're all excited, but maybe I just want someone, just one person to tell me, um, uh, Mr. Chair, if you can pick someone for me. Who can tell me what they think when they hear the word engineer? Just one. I know people have had issues and have had stories about engineers. What have you heard? What is it that comes to your mind when you hear, ah, oh, this person is an engineer? What then comes to your mind? Anyone?
anyone, please. Um, there is a Tino Tenda Kui. Tino. Oh, okay. When I hear the 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 word engineer, all I think about is building or maths. <laughs> yeah, you, you. That's true. Uh, when people hear about engineering, you're talking about maths, calculations, buildings. Who else? Anyone else? What will we be talking about? What comes to your mind? There's an answer that I'm looking for. Shelton, what comes to your mind? Shelton is raising his hand. He or she, I'm not very sure. Okay. Um, hi, uh, Shelton here. So when I hear the word engineering, I think about problem solving. Problem solving. Amazing. That's a good answer. Uh, Panache, your hand is up. Panache, do you have uh, something that you want to say? What is it that comes to your mind when you hear the word engineering? Okay, uh, thank you very much. So at the University of Zimbabwe, uh, yes. they call us the faculty of husbands. The, the <laughs> faculty of engineering faculty. So besides the technology, the innovations, the measurements, and all the structural work, we are yeah. the faculty of husbands. Okay, interesting. I had not heard of that one. That's very interesting. <laughs> uh, we have um, Becky Temba. Becky Temba, one, one last person. What do you, what comes to your mind before we get into detail? Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Afternoon. Uh, according to me, I think an engineer is a person who solves daily problems using math okay. and science. Okay, awesome. Honestly, I thought someone would say when I hear the word engineer, I think about money because um, our amazing society just thinks, well, you're an engineer, you should be having money. <laughs> Whether you graduated yesterday or you graduated tomorrow, you are an engineer. People think as long as you're an engineer, then the back should speak, right? So today my objective is just to introduce you into engineering, talk about the branches of engineering, achievements of engineering, salaries, hmm? the money, the bag, engineering and the emerging technology and advise uh, and guide some of the students who are into engineering or who are still choosing a career, whether it's wise to choose engineering or how they can draw their path into their career of engineering before they get into their studies. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the world of engineering. I'll start by just defining what an, who is an engineer. So uh, what is engineering actually? So engineering, like one of um, the volunteers we just spoke, it's indeed an issue of solving problems, problem solving. And when you are able to solve a problem, you become valuable. When you are unable to solve a problem, you actually lose value. So this is this applies to any other career path. Whenever you're going to be involved in a business or involved in a company or an institution, if you are unable to address a problem, then you cannot be a value, a value cannot be attached to you. So when it comes to engineering, you're talking about fixing things, huh? Putting action and making things happen. So uh if 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 we would give you a name, we'd call you solution, <laughs> the solution master. Because at the end of the day, you are addressing an issue and giving an answer to that, right? And and and, and fixing that problem as you can. So, like one of you said, is you be using science, you're using a lot of things, it's not only science. Of course, there's uh the backup of science, mathematics, and all different other uh, disciplines. But at the end of the day, you are solving a problem. You're not preventing it. You are not managing it. Yes, you managing it and preventing are part of the things that would come with it. But I just, I didn't want to bring in an, an Oxford <laughs> definition of what engineering is. I just wanted it to come from you, to come from you guys. It's very true. Engineering is about solving problems. And how do you solve them if you're an engineer? You solve by identifying and coming up with ways that would, which are cost effective, that are, are put through economic wise, uh, whether it's climate wise, you are considering many aspects into play for you to come up with a solution. Um, who is an engineer? 
who is Pundari Mapunga? She says she's an engineer. What does she do? So in whatever discipline that she'll be doing as an engineer, you should know that an engineer is a person who analyzes. Already you know that if your analysis um, sense is not as sharp or if it's not uh, ready to learn, then you won't be able to address situations and give solutions to them. Uh, an engineer assesses and builds complex systems because you're putting one aspect into play and putting another aspect into play and joining them to bring up a system of things that are moving together to achieve or solve a certain problem. They are involved in for fulfilling functional objectives and they will be considering all the other aspects in place. So it means if you're an engineer, you're not going to say, I mean, I, I can calculate maths. I mean, I know my maths. Me, I know, I know my physics. I know. Yes, you know your physics, but your physics is not enough to solve the problem. You need to know more than that. So for you to become an engineer, you should be able to, 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 to fill in all those things, to put them into consideration before actually bringing up a solution that can actually help whatever situation that there is. I mean, let's talk about global warming. Let's talk about hunger. Let's talk about all the disasters that you see, landslides, earthquakes, uh, floods. Let's talk about um, any other like world issue or whether community, small community, village issue, regional issue, city, town, all those uh, issues and problems that people are facing. They require critical thinking, designing analysis for you to be able to come up with a solution. So that is what an engineer does. So in, 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 in some instances, you discover that at the end of the day, if you're unable to analyze, if you're unable to design, if you're unable to test and then bring up a system that works together to overcome a challenge, then maybe um, you are not really practicing engineering. So uh, let's go into <clears throat> the branches of engineering. So with times now you discover that um, engineering is now in many disciplines. But if you critically think about these disciplines, you discover that they all come out of these major uh, engineering um, uh, majors, branches that I'm going to talk about. For example, we have chemical engineering, civil, mechanical, electrical, and then I added software engineering. Why did I put these as major ones? It's because whether you're going to do aerodynamics, whether you're going to do bio, whatever, whether you're going to do electro, uh fiction or you're going to do um you know any oil and what what all those other disciplines of engineering they are they come out from these five major disciplines of engineering they're like branches sub branches of these five major um uh, major branches of engineering so i like the last part the software engineering this one with the times that we are moving into it has now become the mother of the engineering but all forms of engineering are now confining to the times and how technology is moving so that means whether a chemical engineer a civil engineer a mechanical engineer an electrical engineer whether you are a biochemical engineer whether you are an any form of discipline in engineering that you are focusing on, you discover that with times, everything is going to uh, fall in line with software, with uh, advancement in technology. Every discipline is being, is being advanced based on the advancement of software engineering. And with that, it brings us to uh, the major achievements of engineering. We talked about engineering giving us um, you know, breakthroughs, solutions to problems. I just want to hear from you guys. Is there something that you have seen in, or something that you know that you think this is an, e, an engineering invention and it just solved a problem? Let's hear what people think. Talk to me, guys. Uh, what is it that you've experienced that you say, ah, this is a marvel, an engineering marvel? Remember, it doesn't have to be CV engineering. It doesn't have to be uh, chemical engineering only or electrical engineering only. It can be anything, really. Which ones have you seen to be um, marvels or breakthrough things that have happened in the engineering field? Oh, I have uh, Eunice. Eunice, can you give us um, one of the marvels that you've seen in engineering? Um, it's not Eunice. I was told to unmute it's Kunde. Can I oh, it's Kundai. Oh, Kundai Natasha. Yeah. It's oh, called nice Eastgate. It's the Eastgate building in Arare. I've always been marveled by the fact that the civil engineer designed it to be 
doesn't have my um, what you call this conditioners air conditioners it's soft air yeah. it's that's what oh, i like yeah. about it and it's and it's based on the end that end housing that they have mm, mm. i find that very interesting that's an amazing observation there um that's a very good local example there, right there. Thank you so much. Anyone else with a with an example of a marvel that they have seen of engineering? Shelton? Um, I don't know if other people would call it a marvel, but the fact that we're actually doing this meeting right now, virtually yeah. right in in previous times you have to meet up physically in order to talk yes yeah, so the fact that we're able to this. actually hold yeah <laughs> the fact that we're able to hold these meetings virtually yeah. the fact that we're now using cell phones or laptops yeah. it just goes to show how much um mm -hmm. how far we've come because of engineering as a whole as a discipline because it's an intersection of software and electrical and all that but together they've just to the point where we are now uh, thank you so much. That's that's key right there. And that is very direct. Without engineering, then we would not be meeting up because the software engineer, a data uh, analytical engineer, there is, there's a mechanical engineer, an electrical engineer, there's a civil engineer that was involved to put up the boosters and locate them. And there's, you know, there are a lot of disciplines that came together, mostly engineering disciplines that came up together to bring about the existence of the, uh, the, the the facilities we are using now for communication. Thank you, that's a very good example. So on the screen that I'm sharing with you guys, I just took out like the biggest marvels worldwide. Uh, of course, you've given me local examples. That That's very amazing. We have also, locally, we also have places like Tugum Corsi. We have um, many other examples of engineering uh, marvels that have happened throughout time. So there's something called the Malawi via, Viaduct. The, Mala, the, the Malawi Viaduct is, um, <clears throat> it's a bridge um, and it's, it, it, it's the reason of its construction was for trade and connectivity from one place to the other. You discover that this bridge has, um, it has this, uh, it's one of the biggest and it's 343 meters high. <laughs> It's, it's like up there and for it to be up there you discover that when people were building that bridge they were building the parts on it on dry land and then moved them with hydraulic jacks to place them in place and then connect the parts to make the bridge complete so it is said that it is uh cables that are weighing 36 tons thirty six thousand tons and um you'd wonder how people were connecting those cables how it came about it's all a game of numbers consideration of wind As we are waiting for our guests to, to come back in, let's 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 share the amazing uh examples of engineering that we we have thought, we have experienced of yes, I've seen. So the past uh, three days I have been down on TikTok on social media, there will be uh videos and articles circulating about Dubai, you know, uh being submerged uh, uh is, there was water that they have received. Um, the amount of water that they have received is sufficient to, uh, to cover their uh, almost a half of their rain season, and they've never experienced that kind of water for the past seventy five years. So it proves in in the next there uh, maybe twelve or less hours, uh, the the city was very clean, uh, no clogging of water, everything was running perfectly. You no, know, I'm just just thinking that of of sewer systems. 
I was thinking of electricity, uh, uh, communication uh, and lines, everything that is uh, related to uh, uh, a city. Everything works perfectly after 12 hours. What kind of amazing uh, engineering is that? So I just wanted to hear some of you guys, you know, you might be basic with certain knowledge. Someone was talking about uh, the Eastgate. No, Eastgate, they've used uh, uh, the technology. Um, they've studied how the uh, antelope uh, uh, construct the anthill and they have copied uh, the, the system of uh, taking up the air compressing it down through the pipes under under the beauty it will then be uh, uh, made to cool and then uh the, it seems like the, the build the building breathes and uh, it's one of the most coolest uh building in in Africa uh, self natural um, um self self made which doesn't use uh, air conditioner so I'm, I just want to hear some of the uh, examples from you guys um what are uh, examples of amazing engineering that you have experienced or that you have witnessed. You can raise up your hands. Just waiting to to hear some of amazing examples that you want to, to share. Rikai Tangwena has raised up the hands up. Please quiet. What else? Okay, the engineer is, is, is almost back. Can I can't hear you? Um, I like the the contribution that has been shared in the chat box oh, by Michael. Uh, the English Channel Channel links uh, the show of Kent in UK with the public colleges in France. It has the longest undersea portion of any channel in the world. Uh, thank you so much for your uh, contribution. Um, engineer, we have uh, managed to discuss further the uh, examples of uh, engineering world um, where we have seen engineering has made an impact. And we've been talking about Dubai, uh, how they have not experienced a huge effect uh, from, uh, the, from the storm that they experienced uh, three, years, uh, three days ago. So over to you, engineer, if you are now available. Well, if you're waiting for engineer, only as Kwanamba said, the great uh, pyramid of Giza with no shadow. Yo, and it's my first time to hear this. And I thought the pyramid is shadow. This is an amazing um, um, engineering, software engineering, AI chat books. We are talking of uh, chat GTP4 and ETC. And uh, there's a, this comment uh, from Michael David. He says, it's, it's not that simple in the actual world. You need experience to get job, but also need a job to get experience. Uh, confusing world. Yeah, that's true. Uh, National Stadium, Akai based nest, Beijing, China. You're talking of electric cars. You know, this, 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 um, uh, Zimbabwe, and I've forgotten his name, who created, um, the car that moves with hydrogen. The other guy also created that moves with, with water, that, uh, that powers with water. So they are amazing engineering that are taking place in the, in the, in the, in the sector. Do we, do we have uh, engineers here? Do we have people who are aspiring to be engineers so that they can also share um, their their thoughts or their um, 
uh, their goals or their visions, if possible, so that we can see where we are going. Are we going to be uh, in the uh, future world of uh, technology? Um, invasion of uh, Red Brothers uh, of the flight. Wow, that's beautiful. So do we have uh, uh, some um, examples or people want to share uh, what they are looking forward to see in the world of engineering? Yes, uh, more hills, you can go ahead. The, the Panama Canal is a remarkable waterway that connects the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. It allows ships to avoid the long and treacherous journey around South America. Engineers faced daunting challenges, including um, including dense jungles, treacherous terrain, and tropical diseases. The canal uses a system of locks to lift and lower ships, conserving water and remarkable navigation possible. This project revolutionized global trade and produced travel time for vessels, demonstrating how civil engineering, engineering can shape the world. Wow, thank you so much for that article about um, uh, a uh, canal, you know, uh, before the construction of that canal, um, I read an article saying that uh, they have uh, cut the route with over 5,000 kilometers. So it is an amazing uh, uh, engineering. Uh, Stan, over to you. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Musharu. Uh, you, you said uh, the amazing part that of the we've seen or witnessed in the engineering field. I myself am an aspiring uh, mining engineer. So I, I will talk about one of the biggest mines uh, in the world, which is the Moponeng gold mine there in South Africa, which is about four kilometers deep. So if you can see in the in the old days, we used to mine to do shallow mining where we would mine 100 meters, maybe less than 100 meters. Even you can see with the uh, artisanal miners that are in Africa, particularly in Zimbabwe, they are mining less than uh, 1,000 kilometers. But you can see Moponen Gold Mine is now mining uh, about four kilometers, uh, 3.8 to be precise, kilometers down the, the surface. So you can see these are engineering wonders. How are they man managing the heating part, the cooling part? Because we, we understand from the geography, as we, the deeper we go, the hotter it becomes. So how are the engineers managing the high temperatures that are underground is something that we, we need to, to look at. It's something that is amazing from, from my end as a mining engineer. I don't know to the other people who are connected here who are aspiring to be engineers. I don't know in their field what type of the, I, I can say, can I say improvements or achievements that have they have made in terms of the engineering field? I'm, I'm not so sure. Thank you so much, Sam. Uh, over to you, uh, Kunda. You know, we have been discussing uh, various uh, improvements or techniques, solutions that have been brought. We talk about the canal, talk about Beit Khalifa, we talked about Dubai, and uh, you have yet uh, Stan's contribution. Over to you. Ah, that's amazing, guys. Uh, it's good that we are able to actually notice these things and appreciate how much uh, has been done so far concerning um, developing the world around us and the, economy, the communities around us engineering wise so you see um it doesn't necessarily have to be a building a bridge it doesn't have to be like a specific chemical specific material it can be literally anything the idea is to solve a problem and bring change lasting change progressive change i'm glad that you went into detail about some of the marvels of engineering that have happened throughout the centuries and decades and have actually brought improvements in terms economic wise uh business wise um socially or in any uh in any way so i'm just going to go to uh my next <clears throat> my next um my next uh list of the things that i want to to share with you guys so besides the things that i've listed and you guys have already talked about it i'm going to talk about some of the simplest of things that you might consider as um, uh, things that are 
light or small, but they're actually engineering models and they've uh, contributed to the ease of things and in life generally. So I will talk about, I will talk about the smallest of things, just a moment. Okay. Uh, okay, let's talk about the light bulb. <laughs> let's talk about the light bulb. The light bulb, without the light bulb, the cars will not have headlamps. Do you know that? Without the light bulb, there will not be lights at night in the streets or anything. What has just been happening over the years is just an improvement in terms of power saving, the shapes of the bulbs, uh, location where you put them, the size, how can they be contained, how can you make them lighter, brighter, how can you make them more efficient? And you discover that uh, things like uh, windmill, huh? Think things like the generator, like you don't need necessarily to be connected. You can have like a, this small little one by one meter thing that is generating electricity and not the whole of curry, but generating electricity for your own household. So it's all these other things, the smallest of things, even the wheelbarrow, it's a marvel of engineering. Someone decided, no, you guys, we cannot be carrying things all around every day on our heads, on our shoulders. We will die young. Let's put it somewhere and put a, a roller and just put a little bit of, you know, a uh, force and we are, we, are, we are good to go. So most of the things that we see, a chair is an engineering marvel. A table is an engineering marvel. It's just that with how our societies term them, you would not want to call a carpenter an engineer, you want to call him a carpenter. But whenever he makes, he discovers a lake and say, you know what, and this we want, we want a, a wooden stair, we want, you will now need to bring in all those engineering things, you need to bring in the calculations, the ways that are going to be carried by the chair, the, the, the speed that the, 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 the person, the people are going to be using, the ways that are going to be carried over the stairs. So the person who's making wooden stairs as a carpenter will require some engineering knowledge or some engineering skill of some sort to be able to bring a lasting uh, uh, a solution to mass, the, the, the stairs that they are actually uh, creating. I won't spend much on that one. I'll then go to um, engineering, I'll say engineering jobs. This is just an update as of 2024. So as of 2024, uh, there's uh, aero engineering this is just aircraft things chemical engineering is products chemicals materials energy mechanical engineering is designing maintaining systems and amongst other things manufacturing things biomedical it's um based on health treatment uh medicine diagnostics technologies so i've listed on the other column the one on the middle some leading companies in the world that are actually leading in terms of these disciplines and the average salary of the engineer. While we are on the salaries, <laughs> while we are on the salaries, one thing you should know about engineering is that you don't graduate today and then earn 101,000 US dollars per year just because you earned a degree as an engineer. When you are an engineer, you should first be able to put something on the table that can equate to the amount of money that you're going to earn. Having a degree is not enough. We need to know that this degree is supported by this number of actions. Then the Bible says, well, faith without works is what? What is it? Faith without works. So just the same with engineering. When you have the papers, when you have done the theology and you've done all that, if you do not have the experience Experience is what gets you to 97,000. Experience is what gets you to 100 from one in terms of uh, year, uh, your year salary, uh, your, your, your salary per annum. It's what gets you there. So until you have enough experience to leverage for your salary, you won't be able to get that amount. So as much as you carry the title of becoming an engineer, it doesn't equate to, uh, to, to the salary you get. That just because you're called engineer, you need to get 100,000. No, they need to know, are you an engineer with it, coupled with experience? So you should be ready to go through the experience part to learn how it is in the field and putting all that you have learned outside the field and then uh, in class and then put it into practical for you to be able to earn that much. I also added um, civil engineering. I also added data and electrical engineering. Uh, what they do, the companies that are leading in their salaries on average, 
uh, in the world. On average, it means this is like average, the lowest, if we get the lowest and then the highest, and then we, we look for the mean value right there, we get an average salary per year of an engineer doing that specific discipline. Um, so you will discover that <clears throat> with the emerging um, technology, you discover that each and every time there is an issue that needs to be addressed, systems are put into place to overcome that obstacle. Maybe before we talk about um, emerging technologies and engineering, is there something that you have noticed that has happened around you as an engineering model and it has improved uh, from where it was before? Like, uh, what, what, what do you think uh, has happened concerning that engineer? I'll give you an example just to make us think a little bit wider. You see, we used to have trains that would take days and hours to get from one place to the other. When you go to places like Dubai, go to places like Germany, go to places like China, they are bullet trains. But right? some way is a place that you take about uh, an hour to get there, you can go get there by 20 minutes, you can get there by 10, you can get there by 30 depending on uh, the, the, the type of trade, fast trade that you've taken. So that's an improvement of an engineering marvel. Anyone with an example of um, an engineering marvel that has uh, improved? Anyone? Um, anyone with an engineering marvel that they have uh, experienced? Anyone that's have hands that you have seen improve? Hands, please, anybody? Engineering marvel, I talked about roads. Uh, anyone with a different one? Uh, I talked about rail, railway, that we had slow trains, now we have fast trains, you have bullet trains, you have subways. The idea is to, to, to cut off the time spent and to improve uh, logistics of a certain area, country, or community. Anyone who has a different uh, marvel that has improved over time? Um, anyone? So, um, I, I thought of uh, being in sector when we used to go for queues, later on yes. they introduced ATMs, later on uh, banking uh, websites, later on uh, uh, applications. Right now, they tape to swipe. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you so much. That, that one, ah, and I can imagine in this time, imagine standing on the line up until around three before you even get into the bank they are closing because one the system inside is slower and it's you know there are a lot of glitches in between the system the network disconnects and there are all those challenges but now in the comfort of your home you can go on your phone connect and voila you are able to do your transactions Tino Tender, you have something to say yes i have something to say Yes. Does the improvement concerning the phone count? The yes, phone it does. Does it count? It does. It does. It does. It does, it does count. Um, yeah, it does. The phone in in general is a is a marvel, right? Yes. Who, who knew that in twenty twenty four we could be telling our phone to do things for us? <laughs> right. <laughs> You would be talking with your phone, like, phone, what is the national anthem for Belgium? And the phone will be searching on your behalf while we are doing exactly. what you're doing. <laughs> Indeed. So there are a lot of improvements. I have Innocent. Innocent, you have something to say? Innocent? Hello? Yes, I see your hand is up. You have uh, an engineering map or you want to tell us how it is improved over time? So there's been progressive uh, developments when it comes to judicial services. I saw there is the improvement when it comes to electronic case management systems. People are accessing mm -hmm. their judgments from home, uh, online setting, from wherever yes. they might be. So they're accessing all those. I see it is a very positive advancement. Of course, of course, oh, yeah. it's a very positive advancement. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's all um, uh, going back to the people yeah. sitting down, software engineers, data engineers, 
um, electoral engineers sitting down and making things happen to improve the system, to, to cut down the hours, cut down the lines, cut down the headaches, the frustrations that come with what the systems that have been there before. Uh, Rubin Boyer, the last one, let's hear what you have to say about the improvements that you've seen. Rubin Boyer. To unmute. Hi, good afternoon. Afternoon. Um, I think we can also include the hydroponic systems in the agricultural yeah. sector, where we yes. have uh, people planting, uh, you know, vegetables and whatever in solution instead of soil. You know, eliminating the use of space. Probably in the yeah. near future, we'll have people staying in the CBD having their own floating garden, you know, and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen those ones. They are amazing. Who knew that you could plant without soil? We, Tiriwana, we have we know, but if you want to plant, there has to be soil. But look at us now. You mean you don't necessarily need 10 hectares for you to grow your lettuce or anything. You can do it at the backyard and have vegetables that can cover 10 hectares in a very small space. So all those things are uh, conditions and challenges that we are facing that then require your engineering aspect to come in and solve and make it more effective, cost effective, make it more reliable, less frustrating, bringing out better results than before. So with emerging technology, what has engineering done as it has actually become easier to analyze, easier to, to build, easier to to, to achieve, to do things on time. Why? Because most of the things that used to take days and months to do can be done at a blink, you know. For example, if you wanted to draw a uh, big, then if you wanted to draw a plan, you'd need a specific pencil, a specific type of paper, tracing paper, you'd need A, B, C, D. Now you just have your AutoCAD, you have your all this other BIM, BIM um, uh, software that you can use to actually draw and come up with the design that you want depending on your speed now. It's now depending on your efficiency, on how long it will take for you to actually uh, see it come to pass. So uh, emerging technologies with engineering, you discover that it has brought up efficiency, effectiveness. Uh, but then with efficiency, effectiveness of the systems uh, merged with technology, it has now caused the rise in demand of an improved personal technical skills of, of a person who calls themselves an engineer. For example, here in Zimbabwe, we talk about devolution, like decentralizing things and putting them in different places so that people have easier access to these things. But if you are at a decentralized center and you are unable to assist people and they have to go to another engineer somewhere else, then there is no need for you to be there. You are not putting in value. So it means if you're an engineer, you need to be hands on foot with the technology. You need to be right side by side where is technology going what can i use it for uh, what are the latest um um uh technology softwares that i can use to improve and to make my work faster and easier let's talk about biometrics you cannot enter a certain place without you know screening your thumb i whatever or sharing your voice with the machine say ah oh, so this is the guy coming in and then the doors are open i mean some systems have become more secure because of technology and it's all coming back to that and you discover that whether it's chemical engineering electrical engineering mechanical engineering any form of engineering all these engineering uh, aspects they are being uh, affected by technology it just depends on the adjustment of uh, a country or society a region how are they adopting to it to make it work for them and not them work for it so i have a very short video to just show you i took um 3d printing technology this video for you to understand but it's just to produce large-scale 3D printed buildings, bridges, and other structures. This technology allows for faster, more efficient construction while reducing waste and costs. Self-healing concrete. Self-healing concrete uses bacteria or other materials to repair cracks in concrete automatically. This technology can help extend the lifespan of concrete structures and reduce maintenance costs. Prefabrication. Prefabrication involves the construction of building components off site, then assembling them on site. This technology can help reduce construction time and costs while improving quality control. Robotics. Robots can be used in construction. Sorry. Oh, you can see it? Yeah, we were not seeing it. <laughs> I'm sorry. What oh, was she?
Uh, I engineer, you are muted. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, like you have, you have heard on the video, the main advancement, I technically, I, uh, so intentionally, I chose the one for construction because that's my field and I can explain it more clearly to you guys. But even in the chemical, mechanical and electrical fields of engineering, there have been many other advancements that are coming up as a result of emerging technologies. So we discovered that uh, back then we were just worried about making a durable building. But now we are now putting into consideration global warming, recycling of materials. Uh, back then we were worried about how to carry things. So we just build and build and build. Now you can refabricate somewhere else and just carry things and join them together and put up a building. So all those things are aimed to make things easier and to make things faster and more effective. So um, you discover that at the end of the day, after you have done all that, an engineering student will have learned about the emerging technologies, they know the salaries, they are ready to go and put up the experience. But what I would want to advise you if you're an engineering student and you're not yet in the corporate field, you are yet still working on your books and your degree program, probably on attachment or going on attachment or in the final year, whichever. But number one, like I've, I've spoken about experience, you need to put something on the table to leverage for your salary. That means when you are going to go into the field, I know we want to make a quick buck. You want to be having a fat pocket on all that, but you need to have experience. That means your first stop in looking for experience, in looking for a job, it's somewhere where you will grow, not somewhere where you will make money. That's number one. Number two, passion. Because engineering is going not only to leave you calculating and saying yes or no, you are going to merge with human resources issues, finance issues, and, and if you just wait, sit down and say, yeah, I'm an engineer, I will look at the drawings and do this. You will find life very difficult if you don't do it out of passion, being ready to, to go outside of your comfort zone and do other things that are not on the book to make things happen. The environment, when I say environment, I'm talking about where we are coming from. You need your family members to be able to know what you are doing. What are you doing? What are you doing? What is engineering? I'll give you an example. I started my working at Zeno in 2019. And when I started working in Zeno in 2019, my parents had no idea. They are, there was, they actually, before me, there, was, there wasn't anyone in my family who was an engineer before. So they didn't know that sometimes I would travel and travel and travel and come back after some weeks. Sometimes I would work up until 12 midnight and then come back home. So I remember the first time I came back home around 12 midnight, I was dropped by one of the senior uh, engineers at Zinwa. He was dropping all the, 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 the students, not the students, but graduate engineers. <clears throat> it was all the graduate engineers, but that time they did not have cars. So we were being dropped after the exercise we were doing at work. My parents were blue black. They were angry. Like, where is this girl? Is this the time to come back home, you know? But so I discovered that they had no idea what really is it that I'll be doing. So when you talk about environment, you want to be able to know what it means to be an engineer. You need to know your work environment, your home environment. Are people at home knowing what your day is like or what you can go into? Are people at work giving you an environment to grow? Because, for example, if you're a girl, the engineering field is mostly up until now male dominant mostly especially in developing countries. So you need to know that you're going to get in an environment where they are male. Some of them, I mean, you can think of anything. Some are stereotypes, some, you know, are womanizers, some are very good brothers, some are very good uncles and all. So you need to be aware of the environment that you're going to be working into if you're going to get into engineering. Grow. When I say grow, I mean your bachelor's degree is not the end of it. You can do other programs, certification, certifications. You can go for other, I mean, seminars. Grow and grow and grow. Don't say, ah, me, I'm an engineer. What else can I become? You know, don't just sit down and think it's enough for you to become an engineer. Grow, improve yourself, make yourself marketable, make your resume something amazing to look at, right? Be teachable. I know you were good at your structural engineering. I know you were good at your chemical engineering modules at school, but it's a whole new world in the corporate world. And you should be ready to tone it down a bit and say, you guys, I've never worked or I've worked but in an internship, but now I'm in the corporate. What is it that I need to do? There are a lot of things that you need to learn that are upside 
your engineering um your engineering degree how to work with others how to 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 um how to work with others how to to adjust how to ask the right questions you know so you should be teachable stay on your feet don't feel comfortable just because somehow your salary is now it 1500 and say ah this is it this is the life no stay on your feet improve yourself right um hunger hunger is something that can be connected to being a person who is teachable if you're not hungry to grow if you're not hungry to learn if you're not hungry to know why is this like this the book says this but why are we doing this because each and every time each and every task that you face as an engineer it's a new task you can never treat it as a the same task because times are changing environments are changing the economy is changing materials improving uh, softwares and emerging technologies are coming into play so you cannot just keep on saying me i'll sit down and draw my plan when i'm at home no sit down with your laptop be able to use the laptop be someone who is reliable have the hunger to grow and bring value wherever you're working progressive career growth have a career path i'm sure you guys all of you have heard about career paths okay i'm now in civil engineer what more can i become what more can i become this while i'm working as a civil engineer what more can i provide what more can i bring on the table what other courses i can do for me to be more valuable and to put leverage on on my um career then the last thing i put on advice is start people are looking for money you think you're doing chemical engineering you want to go to and work at a very prestigious organization i'm telling you whatever you're looking for will find you while you're doing something or don't just sit and say until a johnson and johnson and spot to me i'll stay at home because they are paying me better no let johnson and johnson find you somewhere else just start because what you're working on when you're getting out of college is you're working on your experience the experience that would then speak to your resume when you're looking for other uh corridors to venture into while we are still on that before we get to the other aspect i would want to tell you <clears throat> that when we say start it means sometimes with this engineering disciplines you can actually have your own consulting company and be a consulting engineer you can only become a consulting engineer after experience after being certified by other engineering councils so when you have now been certified do not hesitate to start your own consulting company or to to join other private sectors to improve yourself and to prove your 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 your, your um experience now to students who are choosing a career um maybe the first thing that i would want to just advise you is be intentional remove the money part remove the prestige oh my my daughter is an engineer my son is an engineer remove that and be intentional why is it that you are are you a person who's looking at a problem and say i want to be part of the solution are you a person who's saying ah, i've experienced this and i want to be the change that comes why are you choosing what you are choosing in this part i'm not only talking about those who are looking into choosing engineering but just choosing a career as a whole be intentional your career should be something that is progressive i want to do this because it's going to solve this and when it solve this is going to solve this and this and it's not i want to do engineering because it's prestigious and my mom will call will be called uh, the mother of a doctor and yeah by that no it should be progressive it should carry intention and weight that will then give you the motive when when the books are getting tough when you are getting frustrated you know me i have an ambition i have a goal i have a vision i have something i have a reason why i'm studying this the other thing is time give yourself time time to check on all the do's and don'ts the advantages and the disadvantages i when i was studying civil engineering in first year there were about six girls in our class by the time we graduated we were only two some of them then they say they don't want to do civil engineering they want to do electrical others moved and then they said they want to do international trade and others actually transferred from the university and went to another university so give yourself time to thoroughly know what is it like in a day of an engineer get get full understanding get exposure ask the right questions yes you want to ask about the salary but ask the right questions okay what's the normal day in an engineer's life a civil engineer's life a chemical engineer's life is it something that you want is it something that you can work with if you are a person who likes to stay at home you want to always be there with your family you want to be involved full time then engineering might not be your field specifically civil engineering or electrical or mechanical because you sometimes not sleep at home you will be traveling all day so know the do's and don'ts don't be shocked after you have be given your degree paper and you are ready to go into the corporate world and you are told today you're not sleeping at home and like, no this is what i said before do your research play your part watch the times when i say watch the times it means you are 
are observing, listening to the news, listening to economic news specifically, to know where are the economies getting to. For example, at the age that we are in now is a technological age. If you don't know your computers, if you don't know how to start and type a web document, you might not find a job. You might be an engineer, but you might not find a job. You might be a, a lawyer, you might not find a job, because those are just the soft skills that are being required because of the times. So you should be able to watch the times. Allow yourself to try out things. Allow yourself to try out things. You don't necessarily have to be in school to ask for a day in the life of an engineer. If you have someone at, a, at your exposure, you can say, ah, I'll just be carrying your bag around and see what you guys do. And then you come say, ah, no, I, I spent a day with uh, engineer. I was the engineer's personal assistant. I don't like how they are standing in the sun. You know, I, my skin will be affected. So give yourself time. You know, if you have an opportunity to get exposed, get exposed. Flexibility. When I started working at Zinwa in 2019, I was asked to write letters. To some extent, I felt um, it was very annoying. And I felt like these people, do they know that I spent four years in China studying and calculating? Now they are making me write letters. <laughs> it, it was an insult to some extent. <laughs> I felt insulted. But then... Someone told me, one of the senior engineers told me, do it, do what needs to be done. Do what needs to be done. I'll tell you the simple work of simply correcting the letters, doing the aesthetics of the letters. One day it took me from where I was to another place because I was the only one doing that and the only one who could do it according to the manager's <laughs> standards. So... Do not be uh, um, ashamed of doing the little things, when, especially when you're going to start off, or when you get into school, or when you get into work, the corporate world, when you're done. Start there. Do it and do it to the best of your ability. And then I will leave this time. I'll only take three questions um, from you guys. <clears throat> Maybe you can tell me what is it that you want to know that I've left out about engineering um let's see the hands anyone who has questions let's hear you out guys what is it that you want to know please don't ask me about the money let's let's have other questions that are automatically money related we have talked about money yes um moha mohales i i am afraid of pronouncing your name the wrong way please let us hear you out engineer medium Medium. Uh, in, um, in your presentation, you claimed that we have to bring something to the table. So I would like to know mm. what you really meant by that. Okay. By bringing something to the table. Thank you for your question. I'm saying you need to be valuable. Bringing something to the table, it means you are doing work that needs to be done in making things happen. For example, if I am to travel to, to South Africa today, driving, and I have two people that I need to, uh, that, are, that I might travel with, I need to choose one. One person is a driver's license, the other one does not have a driver's license. The other person is some, I don't know, first aid skill or whatever, the other one does not have. I'll definitely choose the one who can drive, you get it. I have two people, I'm going for a meeting. I have two people, one who can use Microsoft uh, tools, the other one who is able to carry, maybe they are very muscular, they can carry a bag. And I know that when I go for meetings, I need minutes to be taken, I need reports to be made. I'll definitely take the Microsoft person. They have something that they're bringing to the table. You get it? When I say bring something to the table, it means you have a skill an extra skill that you're teaching yourself or that you're getting to know that will make you valuable and that will make you more preferable. If there is a dish of many options of people, you can be picked because you are carrying something. You, are, you can provide something. It can be your charisma. It can be your, 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 your teachable spirit. It can be your um, ability to go an extra mile. Bring something that can make you stand out because as we speak, the markets are getting uh, more congested. Disciplines are getting more congested. Have an extra skill that makes you stand out. That's what I was talking about when I say bring something on the table. Make yourself competitive. Continue to improve yourself. When questions are asked, be able to say something about them. Because maybe you might not have the full skill, but you have an idea, and they can pick you because of that. I hope I've answered you.
Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? Um, is that a, a question in the comment section? Um, let me check. Let me Oh, okay, there's uh, Gems is saying, do you think that learning in China gave you an upper hand in getting a job in Zimbabwe? Um, by the time I was applying for a job, there were a lot of um, user students who denied the job because they were saying, it's not paying ways to us. <laughs> And at that time, a lot of Chinese construction companies were flocking in, in Zimbabwe. And of course, uh, being able to speak Chinese and having uh, studied in China for four years, yeah, it could have contributed to that. But also at that time, my field, which is engineering, was not as congested as it is now. So it was not really difficult for us to, um, difficult for me to get a slot. They literally had openings and they said bring your resident uh, your, your 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 cvs we brought out cvs we went for all the processes and stuff and boom we are at work so some actually got the offers but they were like no i need to go to masimba i need to go to beachman because they can pay me us dollars the economy is this so me i had an opportunity to speak to certain people who encouraged me on exposure and experience which you can then uh, put you to a better paying position salary or a better paying company later on uh to know kudza is saying have having had been working in zimbabwe for a while what's your comment on our civil works and infrastructure development sectors <laughs> it's a good question that's a good question okay <clears throat> one thing i should say is um my comment on the infrastructure and uh, civil works in Zimbabwe. I think they are not um, matching, they are like lagging behind. We can give an excuse that it's a developing country, but I think sometimes it's just a matter of discipline. I'll tell you that in China, when they start a project, I'll talk about, I'm not talking about China to say they are strong enough, but I'm saying both I had, I had an experience when I was studying there in China. But when they start building <laughs> a project, they don't close. There are shifts at 6 p.m. Others are going home at 6 p.m. Others are starting work. The next morning, others are going back. Others are coming in using floodlights, using uh, upgraded technologies. You know, they are not stopping to go. When you go to China today, their issue is not, a, they don't have problems in building. I mean, we all know about the issue that happened during COVID, how they were able to build um, a hospital in a version period of time. If we start building a hospital today in Zimbabwe, our challenge will probably be material financing, but already there's a budget for that. So to me, I think it's a matter of discipline. That's that's what I can say. Our infrastructure and civil works are lacking a lot of discipline in terms of time, in terms of um, uh, in terms of time and in terms of um, development, like actually adopting to new technologies. Recently at my workplace, they recently bought a trencher, the one that makes um, trenches for pipelines for us to do the, 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 the laying. Normally it would take three months <laughs> to excavate using manual work and then put the pipes and then, you know, backfill the, 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 the trenches and then make sure that it stays normal. It would take, but now a trench can trench as many kilometers as the amount of liters of fuel that you have and boom, the project is over. So to me, it's a matter of uh, discipline and uh, uh, ad adapting to upcoming technologies and investing in that. So that the people who are there, whether the seniors, the juniors who are in the field, they're able to improve and cut the course and cut the time interval. Any other question, guys? I think I've attended two, three. Okay, I'll take one from Ebenezer Mapira. Do you always have to wait to get employed by huge companies in the field, or you can establish your own company soon after attaining a degree? With engineering, it's different. When you're doing business studies and you want to start your own business, that's okay. Engineering, people would, you, if you have, if at your place, like home, if you are building or you discover that the person who's building they will probably build other four houses in your area why because people prefer to see your work 
they want to see what you can do before just believing in your name. That's why you see that those who are already in the field easily get money or easily get hired because they have already made a name for themselves. You don't necessarily need to be employed in a very huge organization. But I'm saying organizations like that, they give you exposure to very influential people who can then introduce you into the private sector. And you can also tell you the do's and don'ts and how to maneuver in the field or in the sector. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a big company, but you have to start somewhere. You need to be a junior to someone who is senior and who is better in the field. So because if you just make strides, it's good. You have the confidence. You want to do it. But you should know that you should be ready to face the rejection. You should be ready to face, um, uh, you know, failure because you've never built a house before. You've never co uh, supervised construction of a house. You've never supervised construction of um, a, 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 a ward or whichever. And when people are tendering, they look at that. They look at who is part of this company. Ah, graduated in 2023. Ah. We will find it to be crossing, crossing some other machine. This gamble, Mira, we will come back to it. Let's take a grow, grow a bit. So, people are looking for your experience, they are looking for your connections, they are looking for what you know and what you have done before, so that they can say, Okay, we'll give you another chance. You've done, we have seen you've done this work and it's good. So, yeah, I'll take one last uh question Is there any time for pleasure or socializing regarding the study engineering? That's a very amazing question. Yeah, there is. <laughs> there is. It depends uh, what type of pleasure and socializing, the level of pleasure and socializing that you consider healthy or comfortable with you. But one thing I'll tell you is when you're an engineer, you are probably going to miss a lot of weddings, a lot of uh, all those big events. So you have to learn to interact and make a family out of whichever project you're going to find yourself in. For example, me, I've lived in about four different places in the past four years. I've lived in Nyanga, I've lived in Chiri, I've lived in Vorui, but I'm born in Great Narari. So sometimes I don't have fuel and I'm there in Chiri and there's a wedding, one of my friends is getting married, or my sister, my cousin is a baby, or there's this funeral, and traveling from Chibi to Arari, and then going back to work again is probably going to cost me, or it's not going on with my schedule, or there are some this and that. So I have to find <laughs> some sort of family and friends, and I have to find myself uh, being able to uh, go through that. And even when I get time to come back home, I should not put pressure on myself. I need to, to see these people. I pass my condolences. I need to say, congrats. you need to know that as you get into this field, your definition of pleasure and socialization, like the people who are around you, your friends should know that Kunda is not going to be around all the time. When she's around, she'll try her best to be there. When, uh, you know, they need to know, your family needs to know. You remember I talked about the environment, home environment, work environment. So when you're at work, um, I wish I could... Unfortunately, the picture is not here with me. Uh, I'll tell you what I have done. Me, I'm a birthday person. Not big birthday parties, no. Like just being able to recognize someone on their birthday. So wherever I went, actually people in Zinua, they know that Kundi is the cake person. If you want to cakes in your department, <laughs> bring Kundi, you will definitely eat cakes. I just feel like my job is so consuming sometimes that you might forget your birthday. So what I would do is every quarter, uh, especially when I became a manager, I, I made sure that every quarter, whoever was born between January to March, we celebrate them end of March. We get a cake, get drinks, we sing for them in the morning before we start work, on a, maybe on a Friday mostly, when the pressure is less, and everyone is happy. And you discover that others have never celebrated, all the other all the people have never celebrated their birthdays, and it would make them feel special. So it depends what you call social life. It depends what you call pleasure. But me, I find pleasure in recognizing other people and making them feel special. So I made sure wherever I go, when I was in Yanga, cakes every quarter. When I went to Chiri, cakes every quarter. And I made sure in Yanga they continue that same tradition. And also when I went to Mvuru, even now when I came to Arari. So you should be able to define what is your pleasure. Because if you say, in my pleasure, I have to be in Arare, I have to be in Lokchen, I have to be at Eastgate, I have to be in Borodio, semi I have to be, you'll be depressed. <laughs> because you won't be able to go to semi from Chiri every day, from Nyanga every day to semi 
So define your place, define what makes you feel comfortable, happy, relaxed. Find it within that. Have it with them, eat with the builders, eat with the, you know, if I show you the plate that the builders in Morabida used to feed me with, you will be shocked. Like, oh, engineer, ah, oh, you know, and they'll be probably eating with my timba or they'll be eating with what? You discover by the end of the day when I move to another place, I actually miss those guys. I will be sitting with those guys eating a whole plate of salsa. You know, they just think you're an engineer, so they give you the dinner plate while they're actually using other plates. I'm like, no, why am I giving you? Why are you giving me a dinner plate? So divide, define your pleasure and find what you do. I think that's all I can say. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, this has been amazing. I know I've I've gone beyond the time that I wanted. I was stipulated to actually present, but I hope you guys uh, had a picture of it. I would advise you to look into it. Look into engineering. Find your groove. Find your groove and enjoy yourself. Thank you. Back to you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Kunti, for such a wonderful presentation. I feel very yeah. empowered. So I'm not an engineer, but in my field, I hope to be an engineer. Uh, I've learned a lot, uh, truly, from engineering. Uh, especially like the, 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 the payment part <laughs> about the salary <laughs> and everything which goes with it. And uh, I hope my fellow uh, Young Dynamics have uh, something Thank you for, for, for the to be innovative in all our fields, in engineering mm. and everywhere we can. Thank you very much. Um, this is this marks the end of our session. I believe uh, we do not have any announcement for now, but let's be sure to connect again next week for another amazing session. Thank you very much for connecting with us. Uh, thank you, Kunti, once again. Thank you, everyone who has joined us today for this session. Um, we can um, hopefully say this is the end of our session. Thank you very much, guys. See you next week.